and there's a, a tremendous biology that's grown up um, around the work of Cleveland and Maniatis and Goldstein and, and Egan and others that suggest that there's two processes that work here in ALS. There's both a homicidal tendency on the part of the motor neurons to not survive, but interestingly, there's also, I'm sorry, a, a suicidal tendency. There's this homicidal tendency of the glia to liberate toxic factors which affect uh, accelerated motor neuron death. And working with Lee Rubin, Kevin's group is now to figure what screen that would antagonize this toxic factor, but also improve the survival of the motor neurons directly. And it's through these types of strategies that one would anticipate harnessing the value of these patient-specific IPS cells in the drug discovery program. We have collaborated with Sandra Leone's group. Uh, Sandra recently moved from Children's Hospital to Children's, uh, in Boston, which is uh, Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. But, um, we generated IPS cells from individuals with Down syndrome, and they carry the virus 21. Sandra's work has been asking a question about this fascinating observation of individuals with Down, that even though they have a childhood predisposition to surgery, they tend to have a reduced lifetime incidence of solid tumors. And she's related this to the uh, restrictions on neoantigenesis in individuals with Downs, and she's recently studied a mouse model that carries the Down syndrome critical region 1 gene, which is a, a protein that acts as a negative regulator of calcineurin and angiogenic signaling. And what we did together with Sandra was to create tumors, teratomas, from normal individual IPS cells as well as those with individuals with Down syndrome, and then demonstrate by quantitative assessment of microvascular density that the Down's tumors could not support the same degree of new vessel growth, providing a, 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 a perhaps substantiation of her observation that attempts to explain why there might be reduced solid tumor formation from down to the visual. So these are just two examples where the IPS cells are getting a good sight conditions. Now, what I want to talk about is a couple of stories where we started to learn some very interesting fundamental principles of reprogramming. And the first is the relationship between telomerase and telomerase function, you know, critical for cellular immortalization, and the reprogramming process itself. What has been known is that this cocktail of core transcription activate an entire network of genes that are required for peritosis including the reactivation of the catalytic subunit of telomerase. Here are just uh, six different examples where the fibroblast, which is uh, absence expression of telomerase, has reactivated the expression in the state. You can also see this above by telomere 